Force is a vector that causes changes in motion. Forces usually also act through the physical contact of two objects. Right here we have an example of a change in motion from force. <laughs> you see Andrew and Sam are moving towards each other and Sam is moving faster than Andrew who wasn't really moving at all and the inertia of Sam pushed the mass of Andrew backwards. Now we're going to talk about inertia and Newton's first law of motion. Right now we are driving along, the car is pulling itself, but now, neutral, we are in neutral, we are in neutral gear with nothing affecting the motion of the, of the car. As you know, the car should start slowing down, and it is. This is because of Newton's first law of motion, which is, an, which is an object in motion tends to stay in motion, and an object at rest tends to stay at rest. Because the car is in motion, it wants to stay in motion, but other forces like friction and air resistance cause it to slow down Newton's and third eventually law. stop. Newton's lo third law states that if two objects interact, the magnitude of the force exerted on object one by object two is equal to the magnitude of the force simultaneously exerted on object two by object one, and these two forces are in opposite direction. If you take a look here, at Brandon and Andrew. Andrew is pulling to the right while Brandon is pulling opposite direction to the left. Now these two are both equal forces so neither of them are in motion right now. A good now. way to explain forces um, is by using uh, the analogy of football as you can see here. Like catching a football. Or throwing a football. Even a change in motion like when you catch that game winning touchdown pass. All right, now it's time for the boring part of the presentation where we fluff things up a little bit. You did, you did this to yourself, you are. All right, so we have Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. We have a nice little stick figure here. We can call this Jack. He's throwing a football from point A here to point C over here. Oh, you guys see. Um, we are saying that the ball is 0.2 kilograms, just in this example problem. The force exerted on the ball is 30 newtons. We're trying to find what the acceleration is. Understand that newton is also equal to one kilogram over one meters per second squared. That's how we're going to cancel variables here. So if you take a ball, you start with force equals mass times acceleration. You fill in what you know. Force, 30 newtons, equals mass times acceleration. We know the mass, 0.2 kilograms. If that were in grams, you'd have to divide by 1,000 to get kilograms times our, our unknown variable of acceleration. We can call this A. Then we just simply solve, divide by 0.2, which is the same as multiplying by 5. And then understand that Newton is 1 kilogram over 1 meters per second, and you're dividing by kilograms. So kilograms cancel, and you'll get your answer in meters per second. So you will get 150 meters per second squared, excuse me, to be your answer for acceleration in this problem. Friction, the force of two objects uh, rubbing up against each other. Now, the first object being the car, and the second object being the ground. And now, the car is moving to the right, okay, and uh, using an applied force to the right. Well, the friction on the between the tires and the road would be pulling the car this way to the left, and but since the forces forces aren't equal, the car wouldn't be staying in one one spot, and and uh, since the for the applied force is much greater than the force of the friction, the car would be moving to the right a lot faster, and. But if the car were to be set in neutral, the uh, friction of the ground as, as the car slows down um, is, well, it is slowing down be due to the actual friction of the um, ground. If there was no fric force of friction moving against the car, then the car would uh, just keep moving forever.